Chapter 5 The Disappearances Adrian Moore left the lighthouse with his heart racing and his mind buzzing with questions. The sun had dipped below the horizon, casting the town of Ashwick in twilight. The sea was a dark mass below the cliffs, its surface roiling like a living thing. The wind had picked up, howling around him, as if the elements themselves were conspiring to drive him away from this place. But Adrian wasn't leaving not yet. He had come too far, learned too much. The journal he had found in the lighthouse confirmed what he had suspected the sea held a terrifying power over Ashwick, and the townspeople were involved in something far older and darker than he had imagined. The lighthouse keeper had seen something in the water, something monstrous. But was that creature responsible for the disappearances? And what role did the town play in it all? As he walked back through the winding streets of Ashwick, his thoughts turned to the missing tourists. Dozens of them had vanished in the last few months alone, drawn to the town's rugged beauty and promise of peace, only to disappear without a trace. Father Ellison had mentioned that the sea called to them. The shopkeeper had said the same thing, hinting at something that changed them once they answered that call. But what exactly was happening to these people? Were they being sacrificed to some ancient creature beneath the waves? Or was something far worse at play? Adrian needed more answers. He couldn't rely on cryptic warnings and vague myths. If he was going to uncover the truth, he needed to find concrete evidence, something that would connect the missing tourists to whatever was lurking in the depths. His first stop was the Ashwick Inn, where he had been staying since his arrival. The innkeeper was there as usual, sitting behind the counter, his gaunt face expressionless. His pale, hollow eyes followed Adrian as he entered, but the man said nothing, simply nodding in acknowledgement as Adrian walked past. The lobby was empty, its dim light casting long shadows on the worn floorboards. Adrian made his way upstairs to his room, feeling the weight of exhaustion beginning to settle over him. He hadn't slept well since he'd arrived in Ashwick, and the events of the day, his discovery of the journal, the eerie altar in the lighthouse had left him feeling drained. But he couldn't rest. Not yet. Inside his room, Adrian sat down at the small desk by the window and opened his laptop. He had managed to get a weak signal from the town's unreliable Wi-Fi, just enough to begin his search for any information on the missing tourists. He combed through reports, news articles and police records, trying to find a pattern that might link them. The first few names he entered brought up little more than brief mentions people who had come to Ashwick for a vacation and never returned. No bodies had been found, no clues left behind. In most cases, the investigations had stalled out after a few weeks, and the disappearances were chalked up to accidents or voluntary vanishings. But as Adrian dug deeper, he began to notice something strange. Several of the missing tourists had been in contact with the same person before they disappeared. A local guide, someone who offered off the beaten path tours of Ashwick's cliffs and secluded beaches. The name came up again and again Elias Hartman. Adrian's pulse quickened. This was the first solid lead he had found something that connected the disappearances to a single individual. Hartman seemed to be involved with at least six of the tourists who had vanished either through email correspondence or bookings for private excursions. His name had come up in the background of police reports, but none of the authorities had pursued him as a suspect. He was just another local offering tours to the curious. Adrian wasn't convinced. The next morning, Adrian set out to find Elias Hartman. The weather had taken a turn for the worse overnight, and now a thick fog blanketed the town, wrapping Ashwick in a cold, clammy mist. Visibility was poor, and the town's narrow streets seemed to close in around him as he walked, the fog muting every sound except for the occasional distant crash of the sea against the cliffs. He found Hartman's house on the edge of town, a small, weather-beaten cottage that overlooked the cliffs. The house was old, its roof sagging under the weight of years of neglect, and the front yard was overgrown with tangled weeds. A rickety wooden fence lined the property, its paint peeling and faded. Adrian approached the front door and knocked. For a long moment, there was no response. 
The wind whistled through the cracks in the fence, carrying with it the smell of salt and decay. Adrian knocked again, harder this time, and after a few seconds he heard footsteps from inside the house. The door creaked open, revealing a man in his mid-forties with sharp, angular features and a thin, wiry frame. His eyes were pale and piercing, and there was something unsettling about the way he stared at Adrian, as though he were sizing him up. Elias Hartman, Adrian asked, keeping his tone neutral. The man didn't respond immediately. He leaned against the doorframe, crossing his arms over his chest as he studied Adrian with a cold, calculating gaze. That's me, Hartman said finally, his voice low and rough. What do you want? I'm Detective Adrian Moore. I'm looking into the disappearances around Ashwick. Your name came up in connection to several of the missing tourists. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Hartman's expression didn't change, but something flickered behind his eyes an emotion too quick for Adrian to catch. Disappearances Hartman echoed, his tone flat. People go missing all the time in places like this. The cliffs are dangerous. The sea takes what it wants. Adrian narrowed his eyes. He've guided at least six of the tourists who've disappeared. Care to explain how that's just a coincidence? Hartman's lips curled into a thin, humorless smile. I offer tours, detective. People hire me to take them to the secluded spots places most visitors don't know about. If they choose to wander off on their own after that, it's got nothing to do with me. Adrian wasn't buying it. And do they all wander off on their own? Every single one of them. Hartman's gaze hardened. I don't keep track of what people do after the tour's over. Adrian stared at him for a long moment, trying to read the man's expression. There was something off about Hartman, something in the way he spoke, the way he looked at Adrian, that felt wrong. He wasn't just some local guide. He knew more than he was letting on. Do you know what happened to them? Adrian asked. His voice quieter now, more direct. Hartman didn't flinch. The sea takes them, he said again, his voice almost reverent. That's all you need to know. Before Adrian could respond, Hartman straightened up and stepped back, ready to close the door. You won't find anything, detective, he said with finality. And I'd suggest you stop asking questions. It's better that way. The door shut with a soft click, leaving Adrian standing on the porch, the fog swirling around him. He stared at the closed door, anger simmering beneath the surface. Hartman was hiding something something to do with the disappearances, the sea, and the strange pull this town had on its visitors. But without evidence, Adrian had no grounds to bring him in. He would have to find another way to get answers. That evening back at the inn, Adrian went over the information he had gathered. Hartman had been cagey, but the clues were starting to line up. The missing tourists had all come to Ashwick for the same reason its isolation, its beauty. But what they hadn't known was that something was waiting for them. The townspeople's cryptic remarks about the sea taking people weren't just superstition. Adrian was beginning to think that there was something real behind it, something far older and darker than he had originally thought. But what exactly was the sea doing to these people? What had happened to the missing tourists? As he sat in his room, staring at the photographs of the missing people he had printed out from his laptop, he felt an overwhelming sense of unease. They were all young, healthy, full of life ordinary people, who had come to Ashwick for a brief escape. And now they were gone, swallowed by the town's dark secret. Adrian's thoughts were interrupted by a soft knock on his door. He frowned, standing up and crossing the room to open it. The innkeeper stood in the hallway, his hollow eyes looking even more sunken than usual. His thin lips were pressed into a tight line, and he shifted nervously on his feet, as though he didn't want to be seen speaking to Adrian. There's something you should see, the innkeeper whispered, his voice barely above a breath. Adrian's heart skipped a beat. What is it? The innkeeper glanced over his shoulder, checking the hallway behind him before speaking again. Down by the cliffs, just come, but be quiet. Without another word, the innkeeper turned and headed downstairs, his footsteps soft and quick. 
Adrian followed, his mind racing. The innkeeper had been almost completely silent since Adrian's arrival in Ashwick, offering nothing but vague warnings and cold stares. Whatever had prompted him to speak up now must have been important. They left the inn through the back door, stepping out into the cold night air. The fog had thickened, turning the town into a ghostly maze of indistinct shapes and shadowy figures. The moon was barely visible behind the cloud cover, casting a dim, silvery light over everything. The innkeeper led Adrian down a narrow path toward the cliffs, the sound of the sea growing louder with each step. The cliffs loomed ahead, dark and jagged, their edges shrouded in mist. Adrian felt a chill crawl down his spine as they approached the edge. What is it, Adrian whispered, glancing at the innkeeper. The old man didn't answer. He pointed toward the cliffs, his hand trembling slightly. Adrian squinted, trying to see through the fog. And then, slowly, the shapes came into focus. Figures. At least a dozen of them, standing at the very edge of the cliffs, their backs to Adrian. They were motionless, their heads tilted upward, as if staring out at the sea. Adrian's heart pounded in his chest as he watched. He took a step closer, the cold wind biting at his skin. The figures didn't move, didn't react to his presence. They stood in perfect stillness, facing the dark, endless expanse of water. Adrian moved closer still, his breath catching in his throat as he finally saw their faces. They were the missing tourists. Pale, lifeless, their eyes wide and unblinking, their expressions frozen in eerie tranquility. Their skin was slick and damp, as if they had just emerged from the water. And they were whispering. Adrian couldn't make out the words, but the sound filled the air a low, rhythmic murmur that rose and fell with the waves. It was almost like a chant, a prayer to something beneath the surface of the sea. His mind reeled, horror creeping through him. The tourists hadn't vanished. They had answered the call of the sea. They were no longer missing, they were. Changed. And whatever had claimed them wasn't finished yet. <laughs>